Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. Today we've got a bit of a follow-up video on our Glock 43. Uh, this will be my first time shooting impressions um, on the gun. I've only taken the gun out once so far, and as you can see, I already did some stuff to it. I told myself that I wasn't gonna do anything to this gun until I at least took it out for the first time to shoot it. Um, I got antsy, and you guys already know I had the ETS mag, so I was curious about those, and then I, I really wanted to see what it was like to shoot a gun with a laser, so I got that. What did I think of those? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to have separate videos on those modifications. Also, I do want to send a few more rounds through this gun, um, specifically concentrating on those mods um, to give a better review on those. So this is just going to be kind of a real quick first time shooting impressions. Um, I added up all the rounds I've shot. It is a very wide range of ammo that I had taken out with me. Um, but it was only 163 rounds. It wasn't a whole bunch, uh, but it was a wide variety. Uh, so first off, like I had mentioned before, my review of this gun or initial unboxing video I had of this, I have shot these before. Well, I've shot it at least once before, and that was years ago. And when I shot it then, I was actually really surprised at um, how not whippy it was. I expected it to be kind of hard to control with how small it is. Um, as you can see, the chamber is empty. Uh, but I have pretty small hands. Um, and actually, let me pull this camera back a little bit more. I think we're kind of restricting the light because it's so close. Because this is a small gun. Oh, that one's extended all the way. Let's extend this one. Just a little bit. Okay. Um, so I have pretty small hands. And even with the extension which the extended mag that Glock sends with it is not even an extra round. Um, but my pinky gets on there. As you can see, it's kind of coming off. Now my pinky is a little bit crooked, so that doesn't help. Um, and then with the flat or flush fit mag, um, it's, you know, I, I can't even get my pinky on there, you know, and I've got little, little baby doll hands. Um, so I was surprised at how easily controllable it was. Um, get that out of the way. Uh, so taking it out, you know, um, I kind of knew to expect that. I have seen some people say they kind of felt like it was really whippy and not like it. And this really probably ultimately comes down to just what you've shot. Um, if you look at my old videos, it's pretty obvious. I started out shooting military surplus from like World War II. Um, and I'm talking rifles here, not handguns. But still, it kind of, I think, got me used to heavy recoil um, out of the gate. And also, when I was way younger, my dad taught me how to shoot, excuse me, um, guns with a Ruger Super Blackhawk and 44 rim mag. And he loaded his own rounds, and they were definitely very hot loads. I remember just knuckles bleeding. Um, so 9 mil even out of a small light frame like this, um, I guess that kind of conditioned me to handle it maybe a little bit better. I'm sure a lot of people agree with me. It's all just really going to be personal um, preference. Um, you can tell um, a difference with that mag extension on there. When I took it out, you know, I obviously tried the two factory mags it came with. I wanted to make sure those run. I wasn't too concerned. Glock's kind of known for their good mags. And like I said, I did have these two aftermarket ETS mags. Um, I'll go more into depth on my results on those, but I kind of, through these 160 rounds, was kind of rotating through um, all of the mags. And actually, I kind of ended up using the ETS mags more because I was a little more anxious to, you know, try to create a problem or something with those. But um, long story short, I did not have a single hiccup. Once again, like I said, it's only 160 rounds or 163 rounds. Um, so I do hear people talk about, you know, newer guns having a breaking period. Uh, I've owned and shot a lot of guns, but it's all always been like used military or police surplus. So new breaking thing, that's just like foreign to me. Um, I will say that I noticed my groupings started to definitely get tighter, um, as I shot. And once again, all 160 rounds, so it wasn't like I was shooting a whole bunch. I was actually kind of pissed off at first, excuse my language. Um, cause when my first couple mags, um... It was not great. And I do remember my buddy that had one of these, the one other time I had shot it years ago, I was actually really surprised with how 
um, accurate I was with it. Um, but when I shot his, he had had it for a while. He had already sent a couple hundred rounds through it. And I definitely did notice my groupings getting tighter um, throughout the day. And I don't know if that's just me kind of more adjusting to the grip and the sights and just, you know, naturally making myself more accurate. But, um, you know, starting out when I was shooting the gun, like I said, I didn't really feel like it was whippy. Um, I was okay with the sights. Um, nothing really felt odd to me. I just... I just kind of noticed my groupings were, were getting tighter as the uh, day was going on. And for the last mag, like, I was really happy um, with my uh, accuracy. Um, like I said, beginning with, I was a little frustrated, especially, uh, I didn't pull it out. Um, the gun that this is replacing, I've been carrying a few different guns that, once again, were old military or police surplus handguns. The one I've been carrying the most recently um, is my Beretta 85F, and that's a little aluminum frame, single stack, 380 pistol. Um, and that one's always been fine for me. I don't think I've ever had a single malfunction with that one either. However, when I had first got it and the subsequent times taking it out after that, um, my accuracy was not great with that gun. Um, and it'd like shoot a little to the left, and so I kind of Kentucky windage for it. And then all of a sudden it was, you know, shooting straight on. Um, and so I did take that Beretta out with this gun because this is kind of, you know, that's what I'm transitioning to, to this. So I was like, well, let me shoot it one last time and check out the accuracy. And let me tell you, the Beretta was killing it that day. <laughs> so I was like, crap, did I just waste my money? Because like I said, at first, this wasn't doing the best on accuracy. It wasn't horrible, but I expected more from it. And my Beretta was be definitely being more accurate. But by the end of the day, this was just as accurate as that little Beretta, if not um, more. So, at the end of the day, I was happy with both guns. Finally, the Beretta was, you know, putting in some good work there for me. Um, but I had still wanted to switch up from a 380 uh, to a 9. Um, you know, I, I feel like 380 is fine depending on what kind of round you're using. You can totally get away with it. I mean, there's been times I've pocket carried a 32 ACP, so who am I to judge? But 9, just a little more assurance that's going to do its job. Also, even though the Beretta was aluminum frame, you know, every little bit will count. And so I was definitely happy to get the polymer frame. And once again, the Beretta wasn't bad. It is a fairly modern gun. Uh, but I just wanted to get something with all of the modern, you know, drop safety features and all that. Of course, the the F, uh, the Beretta F I had did have those. Anyways, um, another thing to mention is the trigger pull. When I first got this gun, I watched a bunch of videos. The average trigger pull that everyone seemed to be, be reporting was five pounds or just a little bit under five pounds, and that is out of the box. When I first got this gun, um, I did the trigger pull, an average of five pulls. The weight came out to four pounds and three ounces. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, you know, I don't really necessarily want anything lighter. Um, you know, I, I when I do pocket carry, I always throw it in a holster where the trigger guard is covered, but I don't want a trigger for my daily carry gun to be like something super light i do want a little bit of safety put into the with the weight of that trigger so four pounds three ounces i couldn't be happier i you know i'm not really necessarily um hoping it would be any lighter but after i took it out and shot the 163 rounds through it um right before shooting this video i did a trigger pull test on it again once again average out of five trigger pulls we did come down uh we, we were at four pounds three ounces we came down to three pounds and 6.2 ounces. So it actually lightened up quite a bit. Um, I didn't realize how much lighter the trigger had got. After I did that test, I kind of dry fired it some. And I was like, oh yeah, this trigger definitely does feel a lot better um, than when I had originally got it brand new. So even though it's only been 160 rounds, it, that trigger definitely get, did get some break in. Um, it feels smoother. It, it feels much nicer, a little bit lighter. Um, time will tell if that lightens up or smooths out even more as I continue to break this puppy in. Um, and I apologize for not mentioning this earlier, but if you're wondering what is on the front here, this is our Streamlight TLR6 light and laser combo. Like I said, I will have a separate follow-up video going into the details of how that guy worked for me. So since I had such an assortment of ammo... Um, I figured I'd go ahead and write down and let you guys know what I shot through it. Um, so starting off, also a big thank you uh, to Rusty, who donated 
uh, 80 rounds of Winchester uh, White Box. Um, that was awesome. Perfect timing, too, because uh, I, I think he called me up. He's like, hey, I've got this ammo if you need it. And um, like a few days before that, I picked up this Glock. So uh, that was perfect timing. timing. Thank you, Rusty. So 80 rounds of Winchester White Box. We uh, had 15 rounds. I think it was Remington. I did not have the box for it. I don't know if any of these are them, but the head stamp on it, um, I did write down it had RP. And for some reason, I was thinking that was Remington. Um, but I had 15 rounds of whatever RP is. Then I had five rounds of Fiocchi. Yep, just five rounds. And I'm sorry, guys, I didn't write down like the weights and stuff. A lot of them, I did not have a box to go with them. Uh, they were just kind of loose rounds, so who the hell knows. Then we had 32 rounds of Federal. Um, 11 rounds of the Barnes, and I do feel like it's worth noting. I have some people seen some people complaining about these, uh, specifically Glock 43s, not feeding hollow points very well, or at least the wide hollow points. And this is the Barnes hollow point. It's a pretty wide mouth um, hollow point. I'd shot these before, and I've always been very happy with that ammo. Um, only shot 11 rounds of those, but those fed through just fine. Like I said, I didn't have a single hiccup with this gun. Then I had 11 rounds of Hornady. And then last but not least, nine rounds of gold dot. So that was just kind of the splattering of some of my ammo. Need to get some more and take her out, obviously. Get some more training in. Definitely need to upgrade these sights to some nice night sights. Um, but so far, my initial shooting impressions, guys, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, I was a little distraught at first, but the accuracy definitely seemed to tighten up. Um, so I don't know if that has to do with break-in or just simply me adjusting to the gun. Um, but whatever it was, I'm happy it happened. Um, definitely want to test out these ETS mags a lot more. Uh, those totally have, seem to have a love-hate relationship. I'm probably going to get some mag guts for these original mags. See how those work. Um, it's kind of the same idea as the flush fit ETS mags. It changes up the internals uh, so they can go from holding six rounds to seven rounds. Um, and then last but not least... Um, after only shooting that 163 rounds, I did have the Beretta out there with me. I shot that quite a bit. I've never had any issues with the feel of the trigger, and this has been quite a while since I've taken this out, so my finger has fully healed, um, but this freaking thing, and I don't know if it was just the little dongle safety or the ridges on it, but it left a gnarly blister on my finger, and it was there for a while, man. Like, it hurt to play Ace Combat or Forza. I couldn't do none of that. Definitely do not want to go to the range for a while until that finger heals up a little bit. So one of the things I might think about doing is changing out this trigger simply just for a different, to get a different trigger face on it. Um, I'm going to be weird though, and I talk about this a little bit in my other video, I specifically am going to want to stick with Palmer. I know, I know, freaking weird, why, it makes no sense. Uh, the reason being, um, I live in Kansas, in the winters here it can get horribly freaking cold sometimes. Um, and even since I've had this gun, there's a lot of times I'd be walking around with it in my holster, but in my car heart, I'd be outside for extended periods of time, um, allowing the slide to get plenty, plenty cold. I don't want to be in a situation where I need to use the gun and I have one more thing working against me and that's that my finger is frozen to the trigger because the trigger is metal. I might be overthinking it, um, but that's the, my reasoning behind wanting just a polymer uh, actual trigger on it. Like I said, the weight, I'm happy with it, especially once it got down to three pounds, six ounces. Um, so I'm not, you know, trying to get like a competition trigger out of this. I just want something that's not going to be so blistery. And once again, this is my concealed carry gun. It's not like it's going to be my range gun, but I've only shot 163 rounds through this. Like I'm not going to be comfortable with this gun until I shoot, I don't know, like 500 or 800 rounds. And my finger is just twitching at the thought of that. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll wear gloves or something, but once again, I don't really want to do that. Gloves might eat up some of the recoil. I want to, you know, get used to how the gun feels shooting. So just let you guys know my thoughts on that. And I have seen at least one aftermarket trigger out there um, that is actually still a polymer um, actual trigger on it. It's just a little bit smooth. Anyways, guys, I think that's all I've got for you. Like I said, I will have some follow-up videos on the Streamlight, on the ETS mags. Um, I think I said the first mod I need to do are the sights, and as you can see, I still have not done that, so 
Um, I will be updating you guys as um, I go along upgrading this gun. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please contemplate hitting that like and subscribe button. Stay safe and stay shiny.